Hey, I heard that you might want to see another 10 superhero costume redesigns that are better than the original. I guess I can do that for you again. Number 10, Nova. All right, starting off our little list today is going to actually be more of a different version of a character of the same name rather than a redesign. There have been multiple Nova Primes throughout the history of the universe. Richard Ryder is absolutely the main one, and he is fantastic. I absolutely adore his Nova Prime costume. But when we first saw Samuel Alexander in Point One Number One in 2011, sporting the black Nova helmet, I'm sorry, it just did something special for me. I really enjoy it. Granted, being a younger, more slender guy, he doesn't exude the same kind of power that Richard Ryder does. But that doesn't make him any less powerful, and it doesn't make his costume any less impressive. Also, Disney, if you're listening, let me play Samuel Alexander, please. I want to wear his costume. Thank you. Number 9. Beast. We mentioned in the last video the way the X-Men uniforms were all essentially variations of the same costume. Hank McCoy was a shorter, stocky guy. He had huge hands and feet, and his original costume didn't even have gloves or boots, which helped him to stand out even more. Hank was the bruiser on the team for sure, with his mutations being strength and agility. But while he may have been a somewhat odd looking guy, he was still fairly human looking. That is, until Amazing Adventures number 11 in 1972. Hank got a job at Roxxon, basically, where he developed a serum that acted as a catalyst for activating latent mutations for short periods of time. And then he drank it. The effects of this serum ended up making Hank grow gray fur. His muscles expanded, his ears became large and pointed, he got claws, and his canine teeth grew and became fangs. The serum further increased his superhuman agility, endurance, speed, and strength, as well as enhancing his senses. In Amazing Adventures 14, his fur would become blue thanks to Quasimodo, and he's been the same ever since. Whoa, 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 slow your roll there. I gotta talk about how great you are. Every time you like and subscribe, it sends a ripple through the YouTube algorithm that makes this channel look just a bit more attractive. So thanks for doing that. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook as well. And I'll carry on making this video. Number 8. Scarlet Witch Now, I don't know if everyone's seen the WandaVision show, but it's definitely one you should check out if you are a Marvel fan. One of the best parts, at least for me, was seeing Wanda Maximoff get a new look. A look that pays homage to the origins of the character, but embraces a modern design, and just makes her look like a total badass. Which I think most of the fans out there have really been craving. Her powers in the MCU haven't always been all that they potentially could be, even though she outclasses almost every other hero in the MCU. But moving forward, I think we are definitely starting to see her break out of the shell, and this costume really embodies that. I am so excited to see her in the Multiverse of Madness. She is gonna be sick. Number seven, Deathstroke. We always gotta include at least one morally ambiguous character on these lists. But at least this time, it's when he was actually acting as a hero. When Deathstroke was the leader of a superhero team, Defiance, he wore an awesome black and white costume. But not only did this costume change up his color scheme, he actually got a cape. Edna Mode would not approve. His black and orange color scheme is definitely a classic, and I'm not necessarily saying this is better, but I mean it comes extremely close. It's better. And the story it belongs to is it's such a good one. Check it out. Number six, Superman's black costume. All right, here we go. Look, he may have a mullet, but Superman in a black costume? I mean, come on. After the Man of Steel was resurrected in Superman Volume 2, number 81, after his death at the hands of Doomsday, he came back with an all black costume with silver symbol and wrist gauntlet type things. I don't know about you guys, and I, I know a lot of people hate that mullet, but you put any hero in black compared to their usual color scheme, and I'm here for it. The costume would get a revamp in the Justice League live action movie when Henry Cavill comes back to life, and it looked even better there. It may not have lasted too long, but I think this costume has a definite place in my favorite alternate superhero costumes. Number five, Monica Rambeau. When Monica Rambeau showed up in her costume in Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 16, it was a statement. I liked it, honestly. It was simple and unique. 
I don't really like the underarm wing things, they were kind of weird, but ultimately, it worked for the time. She has been around for a long time, being part of the Avengers, Next Wave, and the Ultimates. But it was in the Next Wave number one where I think she got the best addition to her costume. All it took was a coat, and she instantly became so much cooler. The color of her under costume changed a bit, which it consistently does, but the jacket has now become a staple, and every time she's wearing it, I am swooning. Number four, Red Hood. When Jason Todd was killed by the Joker in Death of the Family, it was a huge thing. It was heartbreaking, it was brutal, it was visceral. Six months after his death though, he was resurrected, and he was restored by Talia al Ghul in the Lazarus Pits. He would join and be trained by the League of Assassins, eventually leaving to pursue justice, although a bit more brutally than before. Enter the Red Hood, and an absolutely awesome new costume. Inspired by the original Red Hood costume worn by Joker, Jason's Red Hood costume is so much better. It's menacing and tactical and badass. I think I have a thing for jackets because, again, I love the frickin' jacket. Number three, Batgirl Cassandra Kane. Okay, look, we talked about Batgirl in the last point, but we were talking about Barbara. If we wanna get really into Batgirl designs that will knock your socks off, we don't have to look any farther than Cassandra Kane. Cassandra is the fourth Batgirl, and she is the daughter of David Kane and Lady Shiva, two assassins who raised and trained Cassandra to become the perfect warrior. She became the new Batgirl in Batman No Man's Land, and let me just say, if I was walking the streets of Gotham and I saw someone dressed like this, I would just move, like to a different city. It's so fitting for her, it's intimidating, it's intense, and if I was a criminal, it would give me nightmares. Number two, Blade. When Blade first appeared in Tomb of Dracula number 10, he had an interesting costume choice. Blade sported a collared jacket with a bandolier armed with stakes, riding boots, and let's not forget the super sweet yellow glasses. More of like a cool pirate with yellow goggles than a vampire hunter. He would have different variations of the costume. One that was actually pretty good was when he wore green goggles, a purple jacket, and matching boots, green trousers, and a yellow belt. But in Night Stalkers number one in the 90s, he finally showed up in the leather, sporting a leather jacket, all black clothing with the katanas. Of course, this was born out of the 90s, but it stuck. It has evolved over the years, but the key things introduced have stayed. The leather. The leather stuck. Number one. Storm. The X-Men Storm is one of the coolest looking characters in Marvel Comics, for me. And that fact only gets reinforced in the Marvel Dark Ages number 4, when she shows up in a Wakandan inspired gold and silver costume. It is absolutely stunning. Storm herself is an extremely fashion heavy member of the X-Men. She changes up her look often, and it's usually in unique and awesome ways. Like I really, really liked when she had the mohawk. But this Wakanda costume just takes the absolute cake for me. It calls back to her original costume from the second Genesis X-Men, but it's regal as hell, which it should be when she's the queen of Wakanda. The designs are amazing, and if I saw her show up like this, I'd believe she was a goddess too. Alright you little nerds, another one down. Let me know again what you guys thought down below. The past two comment sections were actually really fun for this topic. I'm Adam Andrews. You can find me on Instagram at the underscore schmadam. This is Top 10 Nerd. Check us out on Facebook for extra content. And until next time, peace out, nerds.